are Penny Pack Baptist Church. This here, this was built in 1808. It was originally built in 17... Oh, I got a sign right here. It tells me everything. It was built in 1787, right? But they didn't do too good of a job, so they had to knock it down. And they rebuilt it in 1805. And the foundation that this church is built on is from the 1700s. This here is the oldest Baptist church in the state of Pennsylvania. And, uh, which means it will be the oldest one in Philadelphia. So, whatever. So this, this church here, I, you know, it's funny. My mom and dad live about a half a mile from here. I drive down this street, um, Bruce Down Road. I drive down this street a million times. And then <clears throat> doing this channel, I notice things a little bit more. I, I pay attention to little things. Well, one, the sign says 1688, so I didn't notice that till recently. But old headstones, you see these headstones? Um, if you see a headstone like this and you can't read it, that usually means uh, it was before the 18, 1850s. That's uh, something I learned at Laurel Hill Cemetery. The, the stone technology, the engraving, uh, uh, you'll see, so the way this, this cemetery, if you notice, like right here, it's all empty ground. Now, I don't notice, but I'm going to assume these headstones are lost. I don't think this is just open space. Uh, these are very, very old headstones. Uh, but let's take a look, a little look-see-loo, a little tour. And here's another first for me. I don't think I ever saw a gravestone from somebody from 1692. This is Robert Duffeld. He uh, passed away November 15th, 1692. He was born in 1634, which means he's almost 400 years old. Now, obviously, this isn't the headstone, but he is the first recorded burial in the Pennypack Cemetery. His son, Benjamin, was baptized in 1688. He gave a quarter of acre of land. I still don't know what an acre is uh, for burial ground that would be set at the location of the meeting house so that house that church is a quarter of an acre so four of them would be an acre maybe i don't know i'll never understand it so you got some uh soldiers from the revolutionary war um which is whenever you see a flag of the betsy ross flag at any uh, uh, of these older cemeteries. That means that person fought in the Revolutionary War. I see two of them. We'll go over there. We'll take a peek at them. U.S. War veteran. Uh, I think that's the Civil War. I hope my seventh generation grandson does this to me. Here lieth the body of David Marple, who entered this life at 1664 in, from Wales, passed away in 1739. 2004, his seventh generation grandson did that. That's nice. That's, you know, that's, that's caring about your family. And, and that's, I, I, you know, that's, that's really, I, I really, <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And, uh, I don't know. So, all right, now you can't read any of these. Maybe that's because it's the other side. Is it the other side? Uh, hmm. I could barely read them. Oh, age two, 23 or two? I don't know. I don't know if I should feel sad. Either way, I'm sad. I'm sorry that person died. I right, said, so here's a guy who fought in the Revolutionary War. That's pretty. And we're going to take a look at the church. This church is still open for service. Um, I, I read they have like a marker that tells you the whole history of the, the place. Uh, they used to baptize people right past those buildings, right through those trees. It's Pennypack Creek. And uh, they used to baptize people there. Uh, the church was started in the 1600s. So that means it was part of that freedom of religion, William Penn, Pennsylvania. That experiment which became Pennsylvania, which led to the founding fathers which leads us to America and gets some guy wearing pink shorts and flip-flops 
2019 walking around here today. I don't think I ever been to a Baptist church. So uh, if you see the wavy glass, that means it's really, really old glass. And it looks like the pews have doors. Looks like there's no, you get right there, you get all the action. Uh, so we're still probably in like the 1800s here with these headstones. There's a Revolutionary War, so yeah, there's still another Revolutionary War. Do you think, like, alright, so 200 and whatever years ago, you think they would still, like, do you, do you think people would still remember you 200 years of like, putting a flag for something that you did? That's, isn't that nice that we do that? One of my favorite things to do is walk in these old cemeteries is I like to look for people who have last names that are streets in Philadelphia. That's mother and father. Ingle, I think that's the family that started this church. Uh, there's Tomlinson. I'll try to see if I can find, I think Tomlinson Road, that's a street, right? But if you go to uh, Laurel Hill Cemetery, there's uh, the Diston, Henry Diston's buried there, Diston Street's buried there. He was a bit, he, he, but Diston Street is named after him. Oh, see the, these are the children that they, uh, they only lived a few years. Child, uh, children did not, you, people, the reason why people had so many children back in the, like the, revolutionary colonial times is because they were dropping like flies so they would have a lot of ki kids and then you would keep like you know two or three of them um i don't think i could do that uh, uh i don't think i would uh, have kids if i was born in a revolutionary time uh just because i could i can't deal with the heartache of a, a kid dying every other week oh uh, look at this one too huh Oh, they're all like that. Hmm. I, I I did a tour of Laura Hill Cemetery um, earlier this summer, and uh, I found out that a lot of people would order their obulus. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. I'm probably saying it wrong. But they would order these things. Well, I call them Baby Washington Monuments. Uh, they would order them from catalogs. That's where you... Uh, they would be like $10,000 and you order it from a catalog and it would come. I don't know if that's how they did it here, but that's the, this plot of land for uh, the older people, the, not the older people, the older dead people, I guess. And then they got the, if you're a new member of the church and you're going to die, you get buried over here. Here we go! Oh, you know what my... Well, they're not my, it's not my favorite thing to see. It's, it's kind of sad, actually. But I like to see... Uh, I don't like to see this. I find it interesting to see a husband and wife, right? And they were married for whatever amount of years. And you see the wife's name and you see the husband's name. And he doesn't show up. Like, he doesn't get buried there. I'll see if I can find one. Oh, look at this, Cotman. I wonder if they're the Cotman family. Like Cotman Ave. Hmm. I bet you they are. I bet you they are. This guy's a Freemason. And his last name's Lodge. That's kind of... Uh, Herbert was a Freemason. All right. See you later, brothers. Eh, see? I'm a Freemason, I can say that. I'm trying to see if there is a guy who didn't get buried with his wife. Oh, I don't I don't see one. Okay. Alright, I guess if you're a Baptist and you, you, you get married, you, you stay in love forever. Uh, I don't know. 
just saying died. I, I, died is... Uh, there has to be a better way to put it. Oh, Unruh. There's another street. Look, Unruh's right near Cotman. It's just... Uh, it's, it's laid out like the streets in the city. Uh, all right. Well, that's... that's uh, oh, I found one. I found one. Here we go. All right. Look, see? Now, here's one. Let me make sure it's been a while. The last person died in 1966. All right, so this family, if, if, if you're a member of this family, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just pointing out something that I see in cemeteries sometimes, and I always wonder, hmm, what happened? Okay, so this is the Taylor family. Uh, Alfred died in 1895. He was buried in 1948. Edith, 1896. Oh, no. Did she remarry? Did she did she get buried with her next husband? Did she uh, not get buried here? What happened to Edith? I have so many questions. I, I don't know. Maybe Edith's still alive. She was born in 1896. Uh, so she would be the oldest person alive. If you know the words, sing along. Sing it loud, sing it proud. Here we go. Everybody out singing a song. Does this historical marker belong? Penny Pack Baptist Church. It was founded in 1688 by Welsh and English Baptist led Reverend Elias Keish. Keish. Who else? Who sought out religious freedom of William Penn's colony. It was the first permanent Baptist church in Pennsylvania. The Mother Church of the Baptist Congregation in the Mid-Atlantic region. The nearby Paddy Pack Creek was utilized for baptisms. The cemetery was first recorded burial was 1692. We saw it, the guy over there. The existing church, 1805. Church is built on the original foundation of 1707. 1807, 1907, 2000, 300 years old. Do you think those new houses, those gentrify, I don't know what they're called. They're just those, those weird houses that popped up all over Fishtown with the wood and the masonry. They're not going to be around for 300 years old. There you go, look at that. All right, so that's my trip to Panty Pack Creek Church. Oh, hit like and subscribe. And I'll sail with you later. Did I really just do this? Toodles!